Hey everyone, this is Kevin Richards here for Total Singing Dojo here on YouTube and totalsinging.com on the web for voice lessons worldwide. As always, please like and subscribe. Share this video if you think it's wonderful, amazing, and superb. Uh, comment below, ask any questions, please. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Again, check out the description. Get both my vocal courses, Breaking the Chains, and its companion, Vocal Fire, which is a warm-up or beginner's course, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, for bills for $50 is a digital download. The link is in the description there. There's male and female versions. Please, for being a nice person and clicking on this video to watch me here today. Uh, today's video is on warm-ups, why we do them, and how you should try. All right, first question is, why do we warm up our voices? Now, I've heard people talk about you don't need... To, Ugh, you don't need to warm up. This is absolute nonsense. There's people that don't know what they're talking about. Anybody who tells you you don't need to warm up your voice doesn't know what they're talking about. Now, there have been rare exceptions of people that go out and sing without warming up their voice. Rob Halford of Judas Priest, Ronnie James Dio was another guy who didn't warm up when he went out. Again, but they were kind of singing within their wheelhouse uh, and singing songs that they've been singing for a really long time. Now, Dio probably could have would have been uh, better off doing a little bit of a warm-up before he went out. Rob Halford certainly at this point could do with a warm-up before he goes out and sings. But the reason why do we do a warm-up? Okay, one. Well, your voice has three moods that it can be in on any given day, right? Mood number one is, yeah, man, let's sing today. Awesome. So I'm ready to go, primed. Let's do it. Mood number two is, I don't know. Maybe uh, convince me. Mood number three is not today, buddy. Not going to happen. Now, the reason that we train our voices is to try to have mood number three as little as possible. They do happen, but we want to have as few of them as possible within our singing lifetimes, right? Um, two is manageable. One Amazing. Hope you have those every time you got to do a show. Two is probably where you're going to run into the most. The sort of convince me to sing today. Right. And that's why we do our warm up. Because we want to find out what mood our voice is in that day. Because if it's in a great mood, yeah, fine. Two minutes, boom, you're ready to go. Five minute warm up, great. If it needs a little convincing, it's going to take longer to get your voice where you like it. If it's in a kind of day, you're going to have to start planning ahead about how you can manage your voice well enough to get through that day or that evening's show. And it's got a whole bunch of variables that come into play there that I'm not going to get into in this video. I'll get into that in another video. But first, now, like I said, you're going to mainly come into the second mood most of the time. Um, even for the most trained singers in the world, warm-up is important because it gets you out of sort of your speaking mode and into singing mode, both physically and mentally. Now, how do I teach my students how to warm up or how do I warm them up when they come in for a lesson if they're not warmed up already prior to coming in, which is always good practice. If you're giving, uh, if you're taking lessons from someone, kind of do a little bit of warm up before you get there. Um, so the teacher spends less time with you warming up and get more to the stuff they want to really, really teach you. Um, I have a few students that always come in primed and ready to go, and they're my best students. Uh, so well, how do I start a warm-up with my students? Well, I always start them very low in their range and with very closed kind of rounded sounds. And then we slowly open the voice up as the voice starts to warm up. Uh, now, what is basically what's happening when your voice is warming up? Well, from resting and sleeping and talking, your voice has only been using a very small amount of vocal range. It's only been stretching, you know, uh, uh, adducting and abducting uh, in a very limited range of notes. You know, um, when we speak, we speak in a very small vocal range, frequency range, where singing is all over the place. So your voice isn't limber for those huge leaps in stretch. And that's what the warm up does. It primes the voice, not only just for the blood flowing through the musculature uh, and the body and prepping the brain to, to get into that sort of psychology of singing, but we're also limbering up the voice and stretching it out like 
a dancer stretches or a martial arts stretches before their physical activities. Even pro baseball players and basketball players and football players will stretch before they go out. Runners as well, right? Because you don't want to pull any muscles because you don't want to start cold. So that's what a warm up. That's what it means, right? So I always start my students kind of low in their vocal range. If they're a standard sort of baritone like me or even a baritone, a uh, high baritone or a low tenor, we'll start sort of in the lower range. And we'll always start with a whoa on a three-tone scale. That's just a whoa, or even lower, whoa, and whoa, 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 right there, you're Right, your high D there. Whoa. Right. Whoa. 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 Now, as you can hear, the whoa as you get higher has to start to kind of start to open up. Whoa. It becomes a bit of an ah. Go back to my couple of videos ago where I did one through all the vowels and how you kind of open them. Uh, when they start to get too high, right? So this whoa, them, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, why am I starting so low? Most people will start their warm-ups kind of in their mid-range because they think, well, my, my upper voice just needs warming up and limbering. Uh, uh, uh. Your lower voice preps the upper voice. You're building a foundation. Lower notes require more air pressure to get the vocal cords to vibrate because they're vibrating along a longer path. The, the, uh, the glottal opening is wider. And it's, the vocal cords are vibrating much slower. So it takes more pressure to get those vocal cords to move. This enhances the warm-up. Don't start in your mid-range. Start in your very lowest range and work your way into your mid and upper voices. Don't start in the middle and work your way up. Don't neglect to your lower range. It's the foundation of all your vocal range, right? Now, then we would do whoa. Then I would take them through way. I'm not going to take you through the whole thing here, but we'll just start here. Let's say... Way, 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 way. When they're warmed up enough, we'll take them up that high, but you know. Way, 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 and so forth, all the way up, right? Then we go to why. Why, 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 why. We're still using that W in the beginning because the W helps get closure. It keeps the larynx low. It gets an, a nice fair amount of compression. And the W is a nice, soft consonant that gets you a nice, soft onset of sound. It's not a, you don't do, you wouldn't do like co, co, because that's, or a, or a G, right? Because that's too glottal. It's, it's too much of an abrupt start. We want to start kind of, you can also do yo, you know, yo. Yay, yeah, you can also use a, a Y. Classical people like to use Y a lot because it's a nice soft onset, right? And then why, 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 why? When the voice starts to open up, but what you slowly do is you, with each, each time you go back to the bottom and work your way up, you want to pick a slightly more open sound. Whoa, let me go. Way, because A is still kind of closed, but starting to open. Why, why? Then we'll go to yeah, because that's a fronted sound. The sun, the the Y puts the sound towards the lips, and the I is very tall. Yeah, right. Then I do all sorts of various ones. We work our way down from the top. You know, ha 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 ha. Right, depending on, I have to listen to the student's voice and determine 
what mood their voice is in. If it's working really well, we can kind of cut the, the, the warm-up shorter or I can get to the bigger sounds sooner. But the idea with a warm-up is you want to start small and kind of rounded and very small, uh, rounded small vowels like O or U. And then as the voice warms up, you open into E, A, and I. And then E for your last one when you're totally warmed up because he's the hardest one to do. Uh, this will gradually uh, acclimate your voice to bigger and bigger and more open, wide sounds. Start closed and kind of soft, and then you get brighter and wider as the voice starts to warm up. Now, you don't always go all the way up. You go up until it's comfortable. And then as the voice starts to open up and, and warm up, you can then increase the vocal range, especially with the brighter sounds. You don't want to go too high with the whoa um, or the U or the E. Eh. When you get to the A and the I, then you can start to add more range and go sort of all the way to the top of your range. Um, and then also sirens and all kinds of things are, I'm not going to get into here. We're already over 10 minutes. So this is the purpose of a warm-up and how you should start your warm-up and, and the attitudes towards doing a warm-up for if you're a beginner, even intermediate, and I even taught this to Rod Stewart, you know, so um, everybody at any level can benefit from, from a proper warm-up. Now, you would do the reverse as a cool down, and I'll show you that in another video. Till next time, this is Kevin Richards. Keep rocking, keep practicing. See ya.